Hi, I'm Kyra, and I'm here to guide you through some general math strategies. In this video, we're going to cover a fundamental math skill, reading the question. Your first instinct is probably to jump right to the math, but hang on a sec. If you take the time to read the question carefully and organize the information you've been given, you're much more likely to calculate the correct answer. With that in mind, let's jump into the three ways we're going to organize information in ACT math questions. First, underline the facts. Next, circle the key words. And finally, label the answer choices. Underline, circle, label. Make this your mantra. Later, I'll show you how to break the facts out into chunks. Let's read this problem for practice. What is the largest integer smaller than the square root of 50? For the answer choices, we have A, 4, B, 6, C, 7, D, 9, and E, 12. We know that our answer is smaller than the square root of 50, so we'll underline that. The keywords indicate that we're looking for the largest integer, so we'll circle largest and integer. So, the answer choices represent the largest integer that's less than the square root of 50. Let's label it less than the square root of 50. Here's a pro tip. When you label the answer choices, choose something short and sweet to save you valuable test taking time. Now we're ready to solve this sucker. Let's go ahead and bring in the calculator. First, we need to find the square root of 50. With the aid of your calculator, we find that it's about 7.07. .07. Write that next to the problem. So, we're looking for the largest number that is still less than 7.07. .07. Now we can easily see that the answer is C, 7, because it's smaller than 7.07 .07 and greater than the first two choices, 4 and 6. Another method for reading the question is to separate the chunks of facts given in the question. You can use vertical lines to group the facts and make them stand out. Let's look at an example. What percent of 4 eighths is 1 eighth? The answer choices are A, 20%, B, 25%, C, 30%, D, 50%, and E, 60%. The lines separating chunks of information can naturally be placed after what percent and of four eighths. This helps draw your eye to pieces of information that go together. Okay, now that we've read the problem and chunked out the information, it's your turn to solve. We're giving you this pause and solve problem to work out on your own. Grab a sheet of scratch paper and a pencil. When I say pause, you'll pause the video and work through the problem on your own. When you're done, unpause the video and we'll go through it together. Okay, ready, set, pause. How'd you do? Okay, let's work through the problem and see if we get the same answer. We can solve this problem using an equation is over of equals percent over 100. We substitute 1 eighth in for is, since it's grouped with the word is in our problem, and 4 eighths in for of, since it's grouped with of in our problem. If we convert that to decimals, we get 0.125 over 0.5 equals x over 100. Then we can cross multiply and get 0.5x equals 12.5. When we divide both sides by 0.5, we end up with 25%, which is choice B. This may seem simple, but these markings that you leave in your test booklet will not only help you find the right answers, but they'll be particularly useful when you go back to check your answers later. Feel free to add your own symbols to the circle, underline, label, and chunk out system. Anything you can do to make the important information stand out will help you on test day. Now, make sure you practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout this course.